Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. My, 22 male, fiancé, 21 female, caught up with a friend and questioned our engagement. Despite the fact that my fiancé did not physically cheat on me, she became emotionally involved with someone she used to like. At the end of November, I realized she was sending him photographs of her work clothing, pictures of what we were doing, such as carving pumpkins for Halloween, and contacting him constantly during her working day, most of which were about inconsequential topics. Her wish to watch a Netflix show one night was afterwards referenced by him in their conversation the following morning. When he sent the final message, he admitted that he had affections for my fiancé and said that the ball is now in your court. Somewhere along the process, my fiancé remarked something like, Oh my goodness, that's a lot to take in at once. I need to figure out what I'm doing here, but we shouldn't communicate until I figure it out. She then took a snapshot of the chat and sent it to one of her closest friends. Wait a minute, what are you going to do? Someone said. This isn't the first time she sent him a text message. Last year, she was also catch up with him in terms of time. The woman said she loved him, but she was with me at the time and felt her feelings were wrong. I became acquainted with the writings. She turned off the notifications for his iMessage and Facebook interactions. I confronted her and assaulted her. She said that she was aware that she was doing something that would injure me, but she went ahead and did it anyway. I requested a return phone call and returned home to spend a week with my family. As a result of talking to others who urged me to quit since it wasn't the first time, I said, I have to give it one more chance and see what she does. And we've been trying to work things out ever since. Currently, I'm seeing a therapist, and she's doing the same. The idea of couples counseling appeals to us, but we need to figure out exactly what we want from it. We spoke about it again last night, and she said that she had never flirted with him, but she later admitted that she may have done so after I discovered it. I get the impression that I'm going around in circles with her. When I'm stressed out, I'm gnashing my teeth and finding it tough to forgive others. The fact that this wasn't the first time she'd slept with him had made her vow to herself that she'd never do it again. I'm concerned about our future, and she tells me on a regular basis that she loves me. However, I assume it is due to the fact that she was detained and almost lost track of me. Any suggestions would be much appreciated. I'm concerned that this would have led in physical cheating at some point in the future. Update 1. I logged into my ex-computer girlfriend's yesterday and uncovered a correspondence with her buddy from a year ago that I was completely ignorant of until yesterday. I was telling her about my dreams, bizarre flirty banter, and pop cultural disputes that I thought I had gotten her involved in, hindsight it all lines up. She had a sensation that something was going on in 2019, although she wasn't sure what she was feeling at the moment. We were still dating at that point and not engaged. I also found out four weeks ago that she had decided to call it quits on a romance. Also, when she encountered a friend who had been in contact with someone who had COVID, she breached the line of social distance that I had established. Opinions aside, she never told me and my family had a few high-risk people. We had a nice conversation last night. I informed her of my new findings and advised her that it was all over for her. She has to dig into her feelings for the other person more thoroughly, who looks half as good as me and is nowhere near financially stable. She gave her approval, and I got the ring in return. After many tears, I started negotiating the lease and the amount of money owed. She's a jerk because I or Ma family own 80% of our possessions, which she considers to be theft. She was driving my car and counting on me to bring her and me to our apartment building. Even with a roommate, she will have difficulties. I hope nothing bad happens to her, but she should have taken everything into consideration before casting doubt on our relationship. It is necessary for the time being that I remain in seclusion until I can return to my parents. It's a bizarre state of limbo. Although it is unpleasant, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. The wonderful memories make me sad, but I know that if this didn't happen, she would express her feelings to other people if we did end up getting married. The good news is that I have a lovely supervisor who has encouraged me to take the next few days off. I also have amazing friends who have been supporting me during this difficult time. The fact that COVID pushed us to postpone our wedding, which would have been one week before the big day is something I'm glad for. Update 2. Our lease on our flat came to an end earlier this month. We were able to get out of the lease with little to no financial consequence on our part. Once everything was in place, it was like taking a huge breath of fresh air. 
even though she took most of our possessions and left the place in disarray. Everything turned out well in the end. Ninety days have passed since we last chatted with one other, only taking about lease updates and arranging pickups for personal belongs. This was the best choice available. It was difficult at times, but it allowed me to devote more time to my own personal growth and development. I'm really looking forward to getting started on this new chapter of my life. During the celebration, my family had some A5 Wagyu stay from Japan, my savings account has already grown substantially, and the wedding and engagement expenditures were just around $3,000 or so. After all, it's a little price to pay in the larger scheme of things, a lot cheaper than a divorce. I'm getting back into shape, pursuing old hobbies, spending time with family, and hope to continue meeting new people once the COVID has subsided a little. I'd better get moving since I've been informed of a new work chance. The speed with which things may turn around after you get out of the fog is amazing to see. There are no words to express how important it is to move on if you're young and single. The decision to stop things two months ago has been so much better than the decision to try to make things better in the same amount of time. Thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts on this subject. My heart goes out to anybody who is struggling with the effects of adultery. I hope that my personal experience may provide you with the encouragement you need, and please do not hesitate to contact me. Cheers. Also, how long did it take for individuals who had just started dating to make the decision to commit? I realize that it differs from person to person, but I'd want to know what your plans are in terms of time. In my opinion, six months after D-Day is an appropriate amount of time. Despite the fact that I'm pleased with the way things are going, I would want to devote a little more time to myself. Edit, someone inquired about the automobile predicament. She was driving my vehicle just before we split up. She was involved in an accident. No one was hurt. The insurance company paid me a substantial sum for the complete loss. She was not at fault. So I went out and got the automobile we had planned to have after our wedding. She was furious when she found out. Update 3. It's been more than a year since D-Day. I cannot express my gratitude to this group enough. Without you, I would not be in the position I am in today. Using this post, I'd want to illustrate that things can become better if you work hard enough for them to do so. Since our lease terminated, I haven't talked to my ex-boyfriend. The choice to go away was the best one I could have taken at the time. It assisted me in getting over my difficulties quickly. I highly suggest you to take this action. Keep your position intact. If you're being trodden on, you need to have a strong backbone. I ultimately succeeded, and it was a fantastic feeling. After a breakup, don't be afraid to take chances. Within three months, I was offered a new position that I would not have accepted if I had remained in my former relationship with my boyfriend. In addition to reconnecting with old acquaintances and spending time with family, I started participating in new hobbies such as hiking. Create new personal goals for yourself now that you are no longer a part of a team. As a result, you must now create goals for your own future. It was both a financial and a professional decision for me. I am glad to say that I have met and exceeded these goals and that I will continue to do so in 2022. Finally, give yourself some time to rest and recoup. I sought the services of a therapist, who proved to be really beneficial. I healed and felt ready to re-enter the dating pool after a period of time. I've since found a wonderful lady whom I would never have appreciated as much as I do now if it hadn't been for my upbringing in a different environment. We're all on this journey together, and in the vast majority of cases, things will get better. This support group is deserving of a lot of appreciation. You're all wonderful people with wonderful personalities. I hope that one day we will all be able to move on from this topic, heal, and find the love we deserve. I believe and I believe because I see. I believe and I believe because I see. Our days in the future, says the narrator.